be honest, um, between the way that I perceive that the way the ballot was done and the way that um, uh, air is being done. So for these, we got a feed from um, OSS. Yeah. All replacements, in fact, all replacements are done here, but go to OSS. Yeah. So we format orders and send them off. Order tracking. What we did, what we did for Valor is we had individual order tracking, and we picked up the order tracking files that come backwards and forwards every day from OSS. Now, speaking to our Armin yesterday, the order tracking we're using is the OBS order tracking. So that is the same, but you're just using that one feed. Then you've got the ultra wash confirms. The ultra wash washes a day out. So what you then get on event day. So we follow this, I, for Valor, we follow this process through to a T, but on event day, we looked at this table. It's the only time we looked at this table. And this was to pick up orders that happened for CPW Cobalt. So after the agent flip, these, this report did not tell me of any CCs because it only reported the agent you're looking at, like for air. So these reports would only come through and tell you what happened on air. When your agent flip, the customer ceases, it doesn't appear in here because it's for CPW Cobalt. You can only pick it up if you look at this one. So one thing on processing this, which again, <laughs> we went through yesterday, is you need separate tables. So you need an air view using this, but you also need a CPW view using this. Um, because that picks up stuff that's gone forward um, and may be useful for doing uh, front door as well, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 it is, so, in a way, you are right. You can, you can replace. You sort of replace this with with just using that. But I mean, that's a good way of doing it. This is still important though, because OSS when they do their agent basically uses this, which is why we do the alignment. Um, so, but it is it is it is a good good point about using this that this can actually replace that. But you then have to split that into source and CPW separately, so you know where it is, you know where the cease has come you know what's going on. And again, this is something that we um, only do on event day for ballot, but again, it can be built in as something generic you can do and check what's going on. Sorry, you have the simple Yeah. They will. Then all these two or only those two layers which Before an event? Yeah. Yeah. So between agent flip and the event, you have to check CPW to see whether they ceased. You have to pull them because they're on the way cease. You won't see them from any other way. You won't see them in the ultra wash because the chances are that unless the new version of the ultra wash comes out, <laughs> which is very unlikely, um, then you, you just have to check the day between the two. I mean, you could just check the day to see what happened yesterday. That's basically what you're doing. Or any anything in order tracking for CPW code yesterday would reflect something that's changed. Yeah, so I mean that's what we're sort of doing. It's just important to pick that up. This is what the CPW ceases are. We only ever see that when we do an event. We don't we don't do them before because it's not likely to be there. Okay. So that's that one. The other important side is BSS then. Um, so it's not really, it's not, when it comes under feeds, it's not really OSS, or it's not really BSS, well I call it BSS, because this is the data you get direct from, yeah, the source. We call it Tesco, yeah. <laughs> This is what you get from Tesco, 
Yeah, but gender generic, it could be anybody. Whoever you buy in, this is where you're going to get it from. Logically, the information in here. Services are linked to what's on this side, but everything else isn't. Yeah. So everything else apart from services and, and potentially products, or whatever, however they store their packages or whatever, um, is BSS related. And what you've got to do there, of course, is you then have to write a profiler to look at this data. And the first thing you have to do anyway is what are they giving us? What values are they giving us? Build cycles 1 to 31, is it specifically valued? Is it A to Z? Or whatever. I mean, they can they put whatever like they like. They just give you, I believe, potentially they give you what they have and what you then got to do under the transform bit to say what they have and related to what we want and what we need. So in this way, you've got your right profiler to do that. You should, one of the things you always need to do is every field that is relevant, because not every field you'll get across will be relevant. You'll probably get data you're never going to use, but it'll be there because it's just in the feed. They give you they're probably just doing a big dump in your bank, there you go. Have a look at that. You, you then have to identify what you need to do. So this is probably a little bit beyond the scope of what we do, because that should be the uh, business analysts who decide we can take this data, we can take this data, this is how we put it in, this is where it can go, etc., etc., etc. But once that's been defined, you have to monitor and verify the data in those fields. So that would include potentially raising data quality issues. If you've got a value in there you don't know what to do with, or they change it to something you're not aware of. Um, that could also happen in services and prop packages. They could introduce a new service. What do you map it to? So it starts, you start to build up a little process here. You have to do every day. You have to check that the data hasn't changed. You haven't got a new value you're not expecting in any of the fields. So early doors, we tend to just say, right, every day, this is the field, have I got something which is not in known values? And if it comes back with a value, then I have to say, well, what's this? What does this mean? How, do I, how am I going to translate this? Should I reject 